Hello, everyone, and welcome to this first week's lecture on the theory of evolution by natural selection. Now, in our week one discussion board, I asked you to describe what you think you know about the theory of evolution. Now, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about what the theory of evolution actually is. So I'm curious to see what your responses will be to this prompt on the discussion board. And here are our learning objectives for this first week's lecture. Number one, describe how adaptations can increase an organism's fitness. Number two, describe how the fitness of organisms can affect the gene pool of a population. You should also be able to define the following terms. Gene pool, species, speciation, variation, adaptation, fitness, and of course, evolution. Now, before we get started, I would like for you to think about all the different types of organisms on Earth, all the different types of plants and animals that you know about that inhabit the earth. You might think of a bear, or maybe bees, or a bass, maybe a birch tree. How about baboons, a blue jay, bats, a buffalo or bison, or maybe even a beaver? Now, we barely scratch the surface of the numbers of organisms that begin with the letter B that reside here on earth. But you have to think, even within the same species of organisms, no two individuals are exactly alike. To look at that, you can just look at individuals in your own class. You are all members of the same species, but none of us have the same traits or characteristics. Now, what can possibly account for this immense diversity of organisms on the planet Earth? Well, of course, one answer to that is the theory of evolution. Now I'm going to introduce you to a couple new key terms. The first term is gene pool. A gene pool is all of the alleles of all the genes in all the individuals of a population. So hopefully you remember from genetics that genes are segments of DNA which code for a particular trait. Alleles are different forms of these genes. For example, in this population of frogs, you can see that there are green frogs, purple frogs, and there is a red frog. Well, those frogs get their traits or their physical characteristics from their genes. All of those genes are located in the gene pool of that population. Now, our next term, species. Species is a group of similar organisms that can mate and produce healthy, fertile offspring. Or, more precisely, they are organisms that share the same gene pool. For example, in the image of the population of frogs above, there were green, purple, and red frogs. But, since they're all members of the same species, they are all able to still mate and produce healthy, fertile offspring, therefore incorporating their genes into the gene pool. The next term is speciation. That is the formation of two or more species from a spe single species as a result in changes of genetic equilibrium. In this illustration right here, we see a population of trees. This is allopatric speciation because they have been geographically isolated from one another from this canyon formed by the river. Over time, the one species of trees produced or resulted in two separate species of trees because they were isolated from one another and were no longer able to contrib contribute genes into the same gene pool. Therefore, they diverged into two separate species. In sympatric speciation, that is where a single species of trees diverge into two species of trees while still inhabiting the same ecosystem. The next term is variation. Variation is genetic diversity. 
This is the differences between individuals in a population or the differences within a gene pool. For example, humans are all members of the same species, Homo sapiens, but they have variations in the color of their eyes, as you can see above. Also, in this population of frogs, you can see there's a wide variety or there's variation in the coloring of the ventral surface of their bellies. Some are red, some are orange, and some are kind of yellowish. In that population of wolves, you can see there's a wide variation in the color of their fur. Some, some are black, some are white, and some can be kind of in between, brown or gray. There's a lot of diversity within populations of organisms. Since there is diversity or differences within populations, some of these differences can give organisms an advantage. And that is our next term, adaptation. That is any trait or feature that an organism has that allows it to survive in its environment. We have a few examples here. The first is the leaf bug. Its adaptation is that its body resembles very closely to a leaf. Therefore, predators like birds would be less likely to see it and to eat it. Here we have two different types or species of foxes. You can see the Arctic fox and the red fox. The Arctic fox has white fur to make it harder to see in the snow, and it also has a thicker coat and bushier tail, which allows it to survive the warm weather. Now the Red fox, on the other hand, has more of a tan fur, which allows it to blend into its environment, which is like desert or grassy woodlands. Last, we have the Venus flytrap. Its adaptation is that it's able to get nutrients not only from the soil, but also from catching insects such as flies. The next term is fitness. Fitness is the relative measure of an organism's ability to survive and reproduce. It's also termed a measure of an organism's contribution to the next generation's gene pool. So it basically means how well adapted to that environment is the organism that is able to survive and reproduce to have offspring that will contribute to the next gene pool. In this example, we have a population of mice. It starts out where there are more light-colored mice than there are dark-colored mice. As you can see, the environment in this ecosystem has dark-colored land. Therefore, the predators had an easier time seeing the lighter-colored mice. And over time, the population of mice tended to have darker-colored fur. Now, it's important to know that fitness does not always mean biggest, fastest, strongest, or even the ability to hide from predators. In the example of the mice, if the dark colored mice were able to produce more offspring than the lighter colored mice, their fitness would have been higher, regardless of the color of their environment or their fur, because they were able to produce more offspring. And that's what fitness is the ability to produce more offspring to contribute to the next generation's gene pool. Now, when it comes to the theory of evolution, there is one name that you definitely need to know, and that is Charles Darwin. Darwin was a British naturalist that spent nearly five years aboard the HMS Beagle collecting biological samples from all around the world. He outlined his theory of evolution by natural selection in his 1859 book entitled The Origin of Species. Some quotes from Darwin. The preservation of favorable individual differences and variations and the destructions of those which are injurious, I have called natural selection or survival of the fittest. In the previous slide, we saw the dark colored mice and the tan colored mice. In that example, the dark colored mice had a higher fitness because they were able to blend in to their background. Therefore, more mice in that population began to have dark colored fur. 
that is survival of the fittest. Another quote, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And in an ever-changing environment, it is not the strongest or the most intelligent, but it's the ones that are able to adapt to this changing environment and be well suited to their environment to have a better chance to survive and therefore reproduce. All right, thank you very much for watching this lecture on the theory of evolution, and I'll see you guys in week two.